Well, thank you very much, John, for that um, kind introduction. And many thanks to the British School in Athens for awarding me the visiting fellowship for this academic year. It has been a privilege and a joy to spend these two plus months here uh, and to be able to make use of the incredible resources at the school to start work on a new project, uh, which as John said, uh, investigates the evidence for what has been viewed as high status Athenian goods in Black Sea burials. Today, I'm going to present one aspect of that work, the Attic and Atticizing uh, uh, Grave Relief Stele that have been identified from Greek uh, settlements in the Black Sea region. Before I continue, however, I want to acknowledge that some of the material I will be talking about comes from the north coast of the Black Sea, areas that are currently occupied or under attack in an unjust war. I want to state my support for the people of Ukraine and uh, Ukraine as an independent nation. I'm sure many of you have already found tangible ways to support uh, the Ukrainians, but I'm including here on the screen some suggestions for donations to UK charities that are running specific campaigns to support uh, Ukrainians, uh, and a link to a document recently shared by Elena Isayev that gives information about resources for scholars in danger. In an overview of the Greek cities in the Black Sea, Stanley Burstein described the region as home to an original and distinctive form of Hellenism. Of the many factors impacting the economic and social development of police in the Black Sea, the role of Athens is one that has long received attention due to the rich evidence for trade, diplomatic, and cultural exchanges between the two regions, particularly in the late classical period. However, picking apart the impacts of these various relations with Athens from the dominance of Athenian sources, epigraphic and literary, and the probably disproportionate valuing and recognition of Athenian things, pottery and art um, in the Black Sea region is a difficult problem. My project as visiting fellow at the BSA takes what is possibly a counterintuitive approach by focusing on exactly some of the high status or highly valued Athenian art that has been found primarily in funerary contexts in the Black Sea, with the idea that a systematic analysis of these items would reveal consumption patterns that can be contextualized within local Black Sea contexts. In this talk, uh, after some brief background, I will present my preliminary work on Attic and Atticizing Grave Stele from the Black Sea and provide two examples of contextual analysis before concluding with my thoughts and questions that this work has presented. I want to give some uh, brief background. I'm aware the audience is really varied, so uh, these potted uh, backgrounds about Athens and the Black Sea and Attic Grave Stele will no doubt be unsatisfying to some of you. But um, uh, in the in the um, uh, in the, the name of, of saving time, I will just give an overview. Um, in terms of Athens uh, and the Black Sea and evidence for relationships between them. Uh, there were Greek settlements founded um, all around the coast of the Black Sea uh, from the later 7th century BC, but in those earliest periods, they had closer ties to Ionian Greek polis. Uh, we see Attic uh, fine wares uh, entering the Black Sea region um, uh, starting in the beginning of the 6th century BCE. Uh, and by the end of the 6th century BC, uh, Attic fine wares had um, achieved a, a sort of near monopoly as it's been described uh, in the uh, Black Sea imported fineware category. By the fifth century uh, BC, we start to see evidence of Athenian political ambitions uh, in the Black Sea region. The uh, uh, evidence from the first half of the, the fifth century is a bit murky, but by the second half of the century, we have Plutarch's account of Pericles' Black Sea expedition uh, that was probably in 438, 7 BC, uh, and uh, a list of Black Sea polis included for the first and only time in an Athenian tribute reassessment, a uh, list of 425, 4 BC. As a result of uh, these, uh, this evidence and, um, and other uh, pieces of evidence, it's been argued that uh, Athenian presence or relationships were developed in various Black Sea settlements um, from uh, clericiae to garrisons to allies, uh, including settlements like Sinope and uh, Amisos on the south coast 
and Obia and Nymphae on, on the north coast. Uh, famously, there's evidence for a concerted grain trade between Athens and the Black Sea, uh, most likely uh, existing in the fifth century, but with strong evidence from the fourth century BC, with Athenian sources attesting particularly close diplomatic and personal relationships with uh, people from the Bosporan Kingdom on the north coast of the Black Sea, including evidence for Athenians living in the Bosporan Kingdom at the end of the fifth century and a Bosporan community in Athens. Especially in the fourth uh, century and early Hellenistic periods, there's considerable literary and epigraphic evidence that indicates uh, a large amount of mobility between people in the Black Sea uh, or between Athens and Black Sea, personal mobility between these two um, areas. Uh, and these include a variety of types of relationships or reasons for traveling, uh, including commerce, elite friendships, um, commercial relationships, cultural educational travel, and the movement of enslaved people. It's in that context then that we can turn to the Attic grave stele that are the focus of uh, this talk. Um, the relief stele that I'm focusing on uh, were in use in Athens from around 430 BC until 317 6 BC, when a sumptuary legislation of Demetrius of Phaleron effectively brought an end to this style. And this particular types of stele are examples of them are in the red box on the screen. The first relief stele come after a period in the earlier fifth century where there's a lack of evidence um, surviving for funerary markers, although white ground lekithoi oil vessels often found in funerary contexts from this period depict funerary ritual at graves marked by plain shaft stele. Regardless, the relief stele of the late fifth and fourth centuries represent a new tradition, uh, often characterized by figural relief scenes most commonly as Bildfeldstellen with recessed uh, scenes in them, uh, as you see on the left, or an architectural naespos form, uh, the second from the left, but also from this period are non-figural rosette stele with pedimental or anthemion tops and stele with relief vessels. There's a debate about the purely Athenian or Eastern Ionian origins for ar architectural figural stele, but by the fourth century uh, BCE, when most of the examples from the Black Sea that I will discuss come from, this type of stele was an established Attic style. Recurring figure types, often argued to represent ideal citizen roles for men and women, were very common, especially in the fourth century BCE. These are conservative figures that recur over time, and as Benson has argued, may reflect the practice of sculptors, uh, may reflect the practice by sculptors of basing their figures on popular design, designs or schemata. Unlike Athenian finewares, which were exported widely in the Mediterranean and the Black Sea during the classical period, Attic grey stele were primarily used in Athens. Export of stele was limited. For example, only 25 of the more than 2000 stele in Claremont's classical Attic tombstones are listed by him as definite Athenian stele, Athenian produced stele found outside of Athens. Hence, we can assume the iconog iconographic messages in the stele were intended for an Athenian audience. But despite the limited evidence for export of a stele produced in Athens, there's also evidence for the wider dissemination of this Attic funerary iconography in what are termed Atticizing stele. At the start of my project, uh, I used a list of Attic and Atticizing stele uh, found outside Athens uh, from, class from Claremont's classical Attic tombstones. The list included 93 examples, which was kindly provided to me by Dr. Kerry Sautel, whose PhD focused on representations of non-citizens in Attic stele. I used this list to start my database, and from there I followed, uh, I followed bibliography, especially other catalogs and publications. Um, of my, uh, sorry, especially other catalogs and publications of Attic grave stele um, and publications of sculpture from the Black Sea region to expand the list to include as many examples um, as I could find. Well, I can't claim that my list is 100% comprehensive. I think it is close and certainly representative. 
although I would certainly welcome suggestions from anyone uh, listening here at the end of the talk. I focused my, my search on those uh, stele found in the Black Sea region, while also including Istanbul and the Sea of Marmara region. Istanbul, with the idea that these finds uh, from ancient Byzantium and Chalcedon would represent the range material that would have the potential to enter the Black Sea region, and the Marmara region out of curiosity to see how similar or different it might be. As soon as I started uh, my research, I was immediately confronted by the issue of Attic, i.e. Athenian made, versus Atticizing in Athenian style uh, that uh, exist in the uh, corpus of grave stele and the various debates around specific identifications in one category or another. Given that I'm not an expert on Athenian art, I decided to take an inclusive approach in my data collection. If something was Athenian enough to be included in a catalog of Attic grave stele or sculpture, then I included it in my list working on the principle that these experts were far more qualified than I am to make this distinction. Contemporary Black Sea grave stele traditions were by and large not figural, so the Attic and Atticizing stele stand out. At any rate, my goal in this talk is not to convince you that these uh, stele from the Black Sea region are actually Attic or Atticizing. I'm taking this as red in a broad sense. But rather, in the first instance, I want to examine the ones that have been identified as such uh, in the Black Sea region as a group to identify trends within the region and compare with other regions. My list of Attic and Atticizing stele for the Black Sea, Istanbul, and Marmara region included 33 examples, with more than half coming from the Black Sea region. This is a larger geographic area than the other two, which may account for the higher numbers, but it also, to a certain extent, probably represents the greater amount of time I have spent tracking down uh, examples from the Black Sea region. In terms of chronological distribution, there are only a few examples from the fifth century BC, all coming from the Black Sea. Here you can see um, uh, all three of the fifth century examples, one from Sinope on the south coast and the other two from Pantacapan on the north coast. The athlete in the upper right is variously dated in the first half to middle of the fifth century BC. And to be honest, I'm not sure what to do with it as this makes it earlier than the figural relief tradition in Athens itself. Again, suggestions appreciated at the end. The remaining stele are evenly spread out through the fourth century from the, three, uh, from the three regions. In terms of iconography, it's too small a sample to talk about uh, clear trends per se, but examples of common iconography of men in, in Dexiosis scenes with seated figures, young athletes, uh, children and warriors uh, are um, depicted. For women from the fourth century BC, um, there is uh, um, a dominance of women either standing or seated with a figure in smaller proportion, likely an attendant or what is often called a maid. The family grouping scenes that were common in Attica, particularly in the fourth century BC, don't appear to be represented here, but it's difficult to say for sure due to the preservation of the stele in the data set. Some stele depicting only one figure may well be part of a larger group scene. Of the examples from all three regions, 12 have been identified uh, um, in various catalogs as Attic imports, i.e. being produced in Athens, four from Istanbul and eight from the Black Sea, a roughly similar subset of the overall group from each region. Interestingly, no Attic imports have been identified from the Marmara region. I'm showing you here some of the examples from Istanbul, and here you can see examples from the Black Sea region. With an even smaller sample, I haven't been able to identify any um, particular trends, either iconographic or chronological, within the Attic imports. But looking at the Black Sea group more closely, there are some themes that emerge. First of all, examples have been found from the southwest and north coast of the Black Sea, but with greatest concentrations in Mesambria on the west coast and especially in the territory of the Bosporine Kingdom on the north coast. In terms of chronological distribution, 
Only the only fifth century examples of my data set come from the Black Sea region, with two from, from Panticapan on the north coast and one from Sinope on the south. Perhaps it is worth noting that these two areas are the ones which, uh, with, for which the most evidence for fifth century BC relationships with Athens exist. The majority of examples in uh, the Black Sea uh, data set uh, were evenly distributed throughout the fourth century um, CE. Sorry, there we go. Uh, were evenly distributed throughout the fourth century BC. Apologies. Uh, in terms of iconography, there's roughly an even split between uh, depictions of men and women uh, and a fairly broad representation of common Athenian iconographies. It's worth noting, however, that there are no great steely depicting children in the Black Sea uh, set or at least children as the primary figure uh, in the stele, and few stele that might have depicted, um, and there are few stele that might have depicted family groups that were so common in the Attic repertoire um, during the fourth century BC. In fact, thanks to an excellent dissertation by Sheffield archeology span student, uh, Abigail Sidorowski, who analyzed the Attic and Atticizing stele found outside of Attica as listed by Claremont, I can say that the Black Sea region stands out on these points. It is the only region um, outside of Athens not to have very steely depicting children. And in the other uh, regions around the Mediterranean, uh, familial groups were more popular in the Attic and Atticizing steely found there. Another way in which the Black Sea group stands out uh, from the larger corpus of Attic and Atticizing steely found outside of Athens um, are the anthemian stele that have been identified as Attic imports. Unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about these today, but it is an interesting group. Looking a bit more specifically at the iconography of the Black Sea uh, group, uh, we have um, a roughly even split of male and female uh, depictions and the male iconography um, includes that early athlete, just one example, um, but is otherwise divided between depictions of, uh, of warriors, um, although this has a, a niche iconography, which I'll come to later, um, and uh, depictions of men either seating or sitting or standing in small groups scenes. For the group of steely depicting women, here we also have a common uh, theme of seated women, but also women standing either alone or more commonly with a smaller figure with them, again, an attendant um, or a maid. Um, and uh, also, uh, as I'll come to in a bit, evidence for um, small children on the lap of some of the women. As I noted earlier, there was a general paucity of figure relief on the grave stele in this period uh, in the local traditions around the Black Sea, although it's worth noting the potentially painted figural stele uh, from Panticapan that Patrick Croix has published. So the stele I've discussed here stand out against these traditions. The key question is, however, what meaning or meanings might their Athenian nature have had in their particular Black Sea context? Based on the overview of, of the examples of Attic and Atticizing Stele in the Black Sea that I've just provided, I would like to offer to contextualize examples as a way of getting at the possible meanings or import of these Attic Stele and iconography. The first will be uh, seated women iconography from Nisambria on the West Coast, and the second will be warrior iconography from the Bosporan Kingdom on the North Coast. To start with, uh, seated women, women with attendants, um, often termed maid and mistress uh, scenes, um, which are quite common in Attic funerary reliefs more generally. And indeed, in the Black Sea examples, seated women and standing women, either with definite or probable attendants, is the single largest group by iconographic type. And this dominance of imagery of women is something that is common with 
the exported stele from other parts of the Mediterranean, really, uh, Mediterranean region. Here I'm showing you uh, the examples from the larger Black Sea data set from Sinope, from Sambria, from uh, Kerch and uh, Obia. The examples from Mesambria are uh, particularly interesting, however. Um, the uh, group of stele that are um, atticizing from this region are dominated by images of women, two uh, seated, as you can see on the left in the center, and one uh, high relief stele of a woman standing, uh, but she also has evidence of a smaller figure and attendant um, by her side. The two uh, seated figures um, also have images of children in them. Um, the cat uh, 2763 on the left um, has the woman is holding a baby in her lap and in um, uh, uh, Petrova M3 in the middle, uh, the uh, attendant on the left is handing uh, the seated woman a baby as well. This iconography with a seated woman, attendant, and baby is well known from Athens, and I'm showing you an Athenian example in the bottom right here. But it can also be found in other examples from the Black Sea region, uh, specifically the um, uh, example from uh, Thanagoria in the top. Uh, top right of the slide here. Um, and it's also worth mentioning the seated man from Amisas on the south coast of the Black Sea with the small child um, in front of him. At Mersembria as, and elsewhere in the Black Sea region, women with attendants, often with babies, was a dominant theme in the classical relief stele uh, found there. And this iconography clearly drew from Athenian prototypes. Petrova argues that uh, for Mesembria, the seated female represented a woman's virtues and status in the house in a way that parallels Athens, perhaps suggesting a specific connection to Athenian idealizing messages was intended or received in this imagery. Indeed, there have been arguments for the direct influence or connections to not just Athenian style and funerary monuments, but also to the ideological under underpinnings that defined burial in Athens. For example, it has been suggested that in nearby Apollonia Pontica, just to the south of Mesambria, the construction of regular burial precincts and the use of plain style stele in the fourth century BCE was related to a de democratic turn in the polis and similar to Athenian funerary purpoloi of the same period. Or in Chersinesis, where there was a non-figural uh, painted stele tradition in the late fourth and third centuries BCE, Richard Possumentier has drawn comparisons with Athenian stele regarding not just their shape, but also in the ways that specific recurring imagery was used to depict idealized gender and age roles, as you can see on the right here. Returning to Mesambria, however, uh, while it's clear that women with attendants, particularly with babies, uh, predominated the examples of Attic and Atticizing Stele, it is difficult to suggest a particular connection to Athenian ideals in the imagery, in particular because this is a small group of Stele against a larger backdrop of non-figural -figural Stele uh, from Mesembria in the same period. The valuing of women's roles as wife and mother within her household do not need to be spread as specifically Athenian, although these Mesembrian women or their families chose Athenian imagery to display these values in death. The fine line between fashion and more intentional cultural messaging and the mechanism by which uh, Athenian stele and iconography traveled to the Black Sea is something that I will return to in a bit. The second example I'd like to look at are the stele with warrior imagery from the Northern Black Sea, the territory of the Bosporan Kingdom, where warrior imagery dominates the uh, sample of uh, Attic and Atticizing uh, stele. Three reliefs from this region depict warriors, and indeed this is the only area in the Black Sea where we find warrior iconography. The one on the left is from Pantacapan, uh, 
at the capital of the Bosporan Kingdom, and the two on the right were found together on the Tanan Peninsula at a site called Jubilee and Noya. One, it has been noticed by various scholars that while the Pantocopaean stele and the, cent uh, the center cat 2354 from Jubilee and Noya 1 follow Attic, and iconography, Attic iconography and style closely, they both uh, incorporate unique or near unique elements such as the greaves on the warrior, um, such as the greaves on the warrior on the Pantocopaean relief to the left and the Corinthian helmets in, on the figures in CAT 2.354. This and the fact that uh, CAT 2.354 is made of local limestone argue against these reliefs being Attic imports. But as Patrick Price has recent, recently argued, some connection to Athenian craftsmanship is likely. And I'll refer to, return to this point in a minute. Contemporary elite burials of men in the Bosporan Kingdom often included weapons, so it's possible to see how warrior imagery resonated in that society. Indeed, at least one local painted stele from Pantacapan from the later fourth, early third century BC depicted a warrior, suggesting the imagery was circulating in multiple ways. Also, given the evidence for many associations between elite Bosporans and Athenians, as documented by Al Moreno, an interest in and valuing of Athenian style sculpture, uh, Athenian style sculpture can be understood as a facet of elite Bosporan identity. But what is notable here is the context in which the two reliefs in Belenoia I were used. In fact, the second relief with the fighting hoplite was not likely not a funeral, funerary relief or a funerary stele uh, at all, as its shape uh, and evidence for attachments on the bracket suggest uh, a frieze, more likely an architectural frieze context. These, uh, these pieces of sculpture were discovered in the late 1980s, found, in a, found reused in a first century BCE, first century CE agricultural installation, um, along with fragments of a third relief depicting an Amazon, Amazon, Amazonomachy uh, and fragments of Itonic entablature from the fourth century BCE. It has been argued that these reliefs were used to decorate a monumental heroine from the third quarter of the fourth century BCE, likely to be associated with the Spartacus, the Bosporan ruling family. You can see here a potential reconstruction of such a monument. The style of architecture, uh, the, the style, this style of architectural tomb from the second half of the fourth century BCE draws closer parallels to structures like the Nereid monument and architectural tombs from Asia Minor which also drew on Athenian style relief sculpture for what were non-Athenian style monuments. But it also makes me think of the Nicaratus monument, a large scale Naiskus monument from Piraeus in Athens, uh, which was erected by a medic from Histria on the west, west coast of the Black Sea, roughly contemporary to the proposed Euble Noia I Heroon. This impressive monument now on display in the uh, Piraeus Museum is almost 10 meters high with a large stepped podium decorated with an Amazonaki relief and Naiskus figures in high relief with an architectural frame. I'd often thought about this monument from a Black Sea perspective, constructed at a time when monumentalizing burials, whether architectural or mounded, were commonly employed by elite groups in the Black Sea region. And I'd assumed that the monumentality of the Nicaratus uh, monument was an anomaly in Athens, sort of a Black Sea incursion into the Athenian funerary landscape. But one of the very enjoyable rabbit holes I went down during these months was, to, was looking into the evidence uh, from Athens for large architectural naiskoi and the use of monumental sculpture to elaborate perboloi during the second half of the fourth century BC. And I was interested and, and, and uh, excited to find that the Nicaratus, uh, that Nicaratus was definitely not alone in drawing on architecture and sculpture to elaborate monu monumental funerary spaces in Athens in this uh, second half of the fourth century BCE. The monumentality of tombs in the Black Sea region is often placed in opposition to Greek practices, but here we can see that those lines are not so easily drawn. In fact, the high relief standing woman from Mesambria that I mentioned uh, a little while ago was also likely from a large architectural nescos 
similar to the ones from Athens that I've just been talking about, bringing Athenian style monumentality into dialogue with other monumental uh, traditions from the uh, monumental funerary traditions from the Black Sea region. So after all of this, what can we say about Attic and Atticizing Stele in the Black Sea region? Well, first of all, just a basic uh, comment that both the stele and the knowledge of Athenian style and iconography were clearly circulating widely and in various ways during the fourth, uh, in the Black Sea region, particularly during the fourth century BCE. The evidence for these stele is not localized in any one particular period or region of the Black Sea. A key set of questions, um, a, key, a key question or set of questions relates to the mechanisms by which the stele or the iconography um, uh, traveled uh, from Athens into the Black Sea. There are various debates on uh, the export of marble, um, particularly in the case of metallic marble for Attic stele, uh, but more widely into the Black Sea region. Uh, there's uh, no local uh, marble sources in uh, the Black Sea, and so marble was imported, and debates around whether this is as raw material or finished pieces or partly finished pieces um, into the um, season, uh, into the area. And Petrova has argued for uh, the western coast of the Black Sea that their pediment stele were imported and inscriptions and painted direct, uh, decoration were added locally. Kreutz also argues for the import of raw marble and uh, carving production of the stele uh, taking place in the Bosporan kingdom. Uh, this also then brings into question the role of mobility of craftsmen uh, in this period, uh, whether it's uh, Athenian craftsmen traveling to uh, the Black Sea region, which has been positive, particularly after the end of the Peloponnesian War, or Black Sea craftsmen traveling to Athens and learning about um, uh, Athenian sculptural style and iconography that way. People have also discussed the, uh, the, the existence of pattern books, or perhaps not, not so literal uh, books per se, but ways in which the iconography of uh, Attic Stele would have traveled um, as schemata or in other iconographic uh, forms. I think that these are all very interesting questions and it's difficult to know how to, um, how to answer them, although um, certainly further investigation of marble types, uh, such as the um, uh, petrographic and isotopic analysis that's been done from Histria, demonstrating clear uh, imports of marble from uh, Paros and uh, from, from Athens, from Mantelikos, uh, would be uh, very helpful, as well as uh, examinations of workmanship and finishing of pieces, such as the work that Petrova has done for the Western Black Sea, where she's been able to argue for different stages of, uh, of working on, uh, on, on these pieces, and postulated various workshop relationships as a result of that. A second area of questions relates to consumption patterns, looking at the selective consumption of attic stele and iconography and the way they were incorporated and adapted into local context. Um, and this is, this is a, key, a key point. As Postmontier has noted, this includes both selective consumption of attic stele in some areas, like Olbia, the Bosporan Kingdom, and, apparent, and an apparent consumption of the messages of attic stele in others, like the Kersenism example. I mentioned. There are a variety of avenues that one could take to pursue this idea of contextualized consumption uh, further, um, including a closer iconographic analysis of specific attributes and stylistic anomalies, uh, for example, different types of seats or um, attributes that are being held by the people in the stele, or closer investigation of armor styles. Um, a greater contextualization of relief examples within local steely traditions, although the groundwork has been laid for this by recent examples, uh, right, by recent catalogs by Kreutz, uh, Petrova, and Postmontier, and consideration of the epigraphic evidence uh, where it survives. 
A key area to investigate uh, in this regard would be the consumption and adaptation of more similar style uh, steely without, or sorry, more simple style steely without relief decoration, like pedimental steely or the anthemian motif, which had an earlier history in the Black Sea region. These types of steely might help to tease out the distinctions between broadly contemporary fashions and intentional, intentional cultural references. But my original questions for this project revolved around a better understanding and contextualizing the relationship between Black, Black, the Black Sea and Athens in the classical period. So what can we say in this regard? In the two examples I presented uh, from Mesambria and the Bosporian Kingdom, we have seen cases for very different but specific appeals to an iconography and style of Attic funerary reliefs, albeit in very different ways and probably reflecting different types and intensities of engagement uh, with Athens. The potential for specific relationships uh, and, and mobility uh, between um, uh, particular families or communities within these areas uh, to Athens or specific mobility of, uh, of, 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 of craftsmen from one place in the Black Sea to Athens or the other way around seems to have the potential to impact these trends significantly. Maybe more importantly, although I don't claim that my list is exhaustive, I do feel that it's, uh, feel certain that it captures, captures the vast majority of the grave steely from the Black Sea region that have been associated closely with Athens. And it is a small and heterogeneous group, to be sure. This is an infrequent ad hoc phenomenon, potentially dependent on specific interpersonal relationships mobility of specific craftsmen and the resonance of contemporary styles in particular communities. In conclusion, I'll leave you with a lovely picture of the Black Sea from Samsun uh, on the Turkish coast of the Black Sea, just to enjoy uh, a view of this area I have been talking about. In preparing for this talk, I went back to uh, my BSA visiting fellowship application and the project that I originally proposed almost a year ago, John gave you a crazy of this in his introduction. In its original conception, the project was designed to investigate what had been identified as high status Athenian Im imports in the Black Sea region, uh, sculpture, elaborate pottery, metal vessels, uh, the other two which I had been working on, but uh, not talking about here tonight. All of this with the explicit goal of contextualizing these more exceptional or rare finds within the increasingly documented and problematized evidence for trade in fish, hides, and slaves from the Black Sea region to Athens, emphasizing the likely ad hoc indirect nature of this trade. In essence, I wanted to decenter what has been perceived as high status Athenian imports, which have uh, received large amounts of attention in, uh, in in catalogs, in museum catalogs and uh, catalogs of Athenian sculpture and pottery. But as sometimes goes with these things, my focus began to shift as I started my work with Claremont's classical Athenian tombstones volumes, moving outward to other catalogs and more specialized studies. Taking the opportunity of working in the exceptional resource of the British School Library to follow leads as they came up and to explore interesting side avenues. Visiting museums and visiting museums to look at Athenian examples. The truly impressive size, weight, and length of scholarship on Attic Stele, the impressive size and beauty of some of the funerary monuments themselves, and the fascinating, the many fascinating interpretations and questions yet to be answered about the Stele in their Athenian context, all these drew me into centering the Stele and de facto centering Athens in my thinking and reading these past couple of months. I don't want to deny the connections between Athens and the Black Sea that I outlined at the beginning of this talk, particularly in the fourth century BC, the evidence is clear. No doubt they existed and were important, but for some communities and some portions of, uh, of uh, those communities. But we know about these, these connections largely due to the preservation of literary and documentary evidence from Athens and the recognizability of Attic art and pottery found in the Black Sea region. But conceptually and pract practically for me, my next steps for this project will be, return will be to return more specifically to the Black Sea context for the use of these stele, and to embrace the fact that they are very small in number and reflect a wide variety of uses and tensions, 
and intentions, most of which likely had little to do with the world of Attic Greek beliefs that I have been so enjoyably immersed in this last while. The original and distinctive form of Hellenism that Burstein posited for the Black Sea region is both built upon and reflected against an Athenian way of being Greek, which had a strong resonance in the past as well as in the present. In the present. Nonetheless, this study of Attic and Atticizing Steely from the Black Sea region has demonstrated that even a concerted focus on very Athenian things can emphasize the limited uh, impact of, uh, of, of those things in everyday life. Thank you for your intention. I welcome advice and comments uh, uh, from, from the audience. And thank you very much to uh, my in institution for a period of study leave I have this semester, and especially to the British School of Athens and its excellent staff and range of colleagues who I've interacted with while I'm here and who have made my stay here so special and productive.